So today we are talking about how to obtain a free furniture design for maybe a security operations center, a command center, a conference room table, maybe even a reception desk or a security desk in a lobby. And uh, that can be done by either uh, a DIY piece of software that Winstead offers called Wells, um, or through what I'll call like a, a full concierge service where we take care of, of everything from the initial design all the way through to diagrams and all those sorts of things. So Tom, when you're um, uh, interacting with end users and integrators about uh, designing systems like this, are, are people usually uh, doing a DIY design or are they getting help from you and Katie or how does that usually go? Uh, well, Matt, it, it really depends. Um, end users, um, sometimes they'll contact their integrator. Um, sometimes they'll go right to a consultant. Um, also, some will at a trade show maybe see the people at Winstead um, and contact them for help. And then a lot of times we'll get in, involved either from the end user, from the integrator, from the consultant, or from Winstead. So normally we're touching it one way or another. Um, but again, there is no right or wrong way. It just depends how you want to get your information. And as you said, some of the end users that are a little bit more um, technical like to even design their own using the, the Winstead Wells uh, software package. So um, it, it all depends what their comfort level is and where they're looking to get their information from. Again, no right or wrong way. Um, a lot of times if an integrator gets involved, that's usually where they'll get us you know, involved as the manufacturer rep. Come out, take a look at the site. Some of the biggest things you gotta be concerned about is, what is the room layout? How big is the room? How big is the area? Um, a lot of times these consoles and command centers are in little spaces. And when I say little, big closets. Um, so you got to really work with, you know, the room size, but also the information, the layout, um, you know, the workflow. Um, but then, you know, what size monitors, how they want to view it. The big thing that we're seeing today with a lot of the command centers are instead of the old days where you had big CRT monitors and these big casement uh, consoles, well, everything's going flat panels now. So the, the equipment itself, the consoles are getting smaller. So that was the first phase probably between eight to 10 years ago even. Now we're seeing that um, most of the command centers, the big thing is, Nobody wants to sit. Sitting is the new, I, I hear smoking in the uh, insurance side. So a lot of these sit to stand consoles. They want you standing 15 minutes every hour. So what that'll do is you can be sitting, you hit a button and it's motorized. The whole command center, the, the work surface along with monitors can be raised in at that point. So again, it's very comfortable from sitting to a standing position, no matter what the height you are. Um, and it, it makes it much more uh, flexible, easier to work in that environment also. Because again, most of these people in the command centers are there six, eight, 10, sometimes 12 hours. So again, it's the area you want to try to make as workflow and as easy for these operators to, to work in the environments. Okay. So there's, um, I mean, you just outlined a whole bunch of different um, types of consoles and, and ways that they're used. And because of that, sometimes doing a design might be perhaps a little bit more complicated. So uh, to help us with, uh, with getting through that and understanding um, how the software works, we have Katie with us and Katie wears uh, a lot of different hats in our organization, but she's always um, uh, in a supportive role, always there to, to help everyone out. And she's kind of our um, inside support specialist for designing these consoles. And then uh, she does her work and, and works with Winstead. So um, Katie, what is the most common way that you receive these requests? And then um, can you just kind of take us through the level of support that you get uh, as a customer contacting us um, and with your help? Sure. So I get the requests usually three different ways. One, I get a request um, straight from Winstead whether an um, end user or an integrator went to Winstead's website and needed a referral to us to help design. Um, I also get people like um, we, like Tom or Joe, our outside guys, will go and they'll visit a site or they'll be on a site for something else like a camera or IDS. 
and lo and behold, they also need a um, need a console. So then we start that process. And then the third way is I will reach out to anybody who downloads uh, Wells from Winstead, and I've gotten quite a few people that email me right back and say, "Oh yeah, you want to help? Here you go," and they give me the information, and I can help them out. So okay. Um, yeah, that's how I do it. <laughs> okay. So um, aside from somebody doing it themselves, they have the option to let us do it. And what we're going to do is have you take us through an example, right? So this will help them understand what they'll get if they ask us for help. And it'll also help them understand maybe the steps to go through while using uh, Wells kind of as a, a little bit of an overview tutorial. So um, why don't you go ahead and uh, show us how you do this? Okay. So like Tom said, um, one of the most important things we need to know right off the bat is the room size because you don't want to get a console and then it does not fit into your room. So I always start out by sizing the room. And, um, you can do that here in Wells. Over here on the right hand side, there's a room. And I'm just going to make this a nice and easy space for me to work with just so I can show you all the cool options we have. Just going to make it a 30 by 30 square room, which is bigger than we're used to, but I've had way big rooms too. So I've had a little bit of everything. All right. And then what's nice about Wells is once I have this set up nice and perfect, um, we can go in and we can add doors, windows, all that kind of stuff, which will help just visually lets the customer see what this is really going to look like. Um, for this one, I was, I'm going to add some double doors onto this wall here. And you also see me moving the view around a lot. This is easy to do just with your um, mouse or with the up and down the side arrows on your keyboard. I like to be particular about what I'm looking at. I have a special way I like to look at things, so I'm gonna move around a lot. <laughs> so this is 30 by 30. Um, okay, so what's next? The scenario I'm gonna do here is a two operator console and then a supervisor console behind them. And we're going to make sure we're, I'm going to include a peninsula and show you guys how we can add corners. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started here. Our most commonly quoted and commonly sold consoles are the sight line consoles. And so I'm going to do that. You can see you can choose your different chase sizes depending on obviously what size you need. So I'm going to go ahead and do a big old console here we'll see if it fits it does so over here you can choose your sizes there's also peninsulas and little a couple little ac accessories here um but it's as easy as right clicking them right next to each other and they will hook right into each other or if i need separate ones i can click them separately but i like that i don't have to make them click together on their own all right so Here's the first, and that's a big console. And knowing, does have just from designing other consoles, that is not gonna fit in that room just because of the amount of space that's on either side here. Right. So I'm gonna switch the sizes. I'm actually, you know, I'm gonna start from scratch. Sometimes we have people that ask us for a specific size console. Um, and sometimes we have people that say, make me a, as big as a, make it as big as you possibly can to fit in the space. That's the more common request that I get. So I'm operating under that assumption today. So that fits much better. That is a yep. um, two operator, simple, easy console. So if I could stop you for one second. Sure. So the challenge there is kind of a, a fork in the road. Well, there's two forks we saw. First is what type of console are you going to design? Mm -hmm. uh, second is, am I designing based on the space or am I designing based on a, a certain number of monitors I have to have, right? So if, the, if, if they need a certain number of monitors or a certain number of um, user stations and they have a, a fixed space, then you may say, well, we, we have to design it a different way rather than just saying, oh, well, this is the size of my room, maximize it. Right, exactly. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and, and Matt, one of the other things I know that the big question gets, you know, and again, we, we sort of talked, you know, room size and that, but also where is the equipment going? When I say equipment, not the monitors, but the servers, the storage, the workstations, um, 
do we have to put that underneath the, uh, the console or are they putting a separate vertical rack in? Or hopefully today, a lot of the facilities now are putting all that equipment in a separate room right. in a true uh, computer room or data closet. Again, that reduces heat, noise, you know, also it, it frees up more space for the operators. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just build all my consoles first, and then um, I'll go back and add in storage and chairs and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to create the um, supervisor console. And in my mind, they're going to be here. So just choose the chase size you need. There's lots of different um, options for how, how much of a bend you would want in the console. There, there's really endless options, but I'm going to do a 90 degree so that we can go right off of this wall here. And then a supervisor can have a significant workspace, but still um, be able to observe. And I, um, they tend to like the L, the L shape because then you can have an empty workspace as well. It's not consumed by monitors. Um, for a supervisor role, depending on what they would need to be doing on their day to day. So actually putting the, com the consoles out here is not that hard. It's actually not hard at all. It's really easy. It's actually kind of fun. So let's get into some of the little details unless anyone has any questions for me first. Nope. Okay. So uh, let's do monitors. Mm -hmm. So you can, there's a couple different monitor mount, uh, mount options here. I tend to do the prestige. I'm going to do four 27-inch monitors for each of my each of my operators are going to sit here on either side of the peninsula. So I can choose that, and I choose 27-inch here and here. And I know this is a big question that normally you know trying to get from the customers too is how many monitors you know, uh, but also what size. What size? And no. yeah, because otherwise. If they were 32 inch monitors, you may not be able to fit four of them on there. Or if they were only 20 inch, maybe you'd need five. So a great question to bring up. Another thing that I like to ask too is, are there gonna be any wall monitors? Mm -hmm. Because then you need to get into thinking, how far away from the wall does a monitor need to be so that it's optimal, you know, that the, the operators are able to see what's going on. They're not on top of the monitors and for the, the size monitor for the space. So Winstead does have the capability, I'm sorry, Will, Wells has the capability here under part categories to, to choose different size wall, wall monitors. And it's an, again, a nice visual for customers to see, customers to see what this will look like when it's laid out. Yep. Um, for the supervisor, what did I have? We were going to do, let me see if we can fit these. Yep. Four screens and then they'll have their, their, their workspace to the side here. That's, um, that's free for them to use for other things. Um, so the monitors are, are quick and easy to pop right on there. Um, no, the next part would be how many CPUs or how many, how many are we going to have? How many do we need to house underneath of the console? And we can go in here and start taking off doors and adding in racks and rails and things, um, rails, I'm sorry, underneath. So I'm going to design and I'm going to right click and that takes, that deletes, I don't know if you can see that, but it deletes those, those doors. And there's, um, we have a door, this is the door I like to use that holds a CPU. It, and Katie, this is even a question I know it gets brought up in meetings. Sometimes um, the customer doesn't want the actual CPUs on the front, meaning where the operators are, because there's a work surface there and sometimes it's not as easy to get to there. If it's a CD burner, or you need to get to the workstation or servers more. You can also then flip them and put them actually on the backside. Yep. Sometimes it's easier to work on them there, but again, we can do either way, no matter what, you get the doors on the front and back and a, uh, a shelf underneath. So, you know, again, even if we put them on the front and when they get to the facility, they want to switch them to the back, they can. Yes. 
Um, something else I'm going to add in here to show you, just as a quick example, are, let me find them, in here, the tapped um, rack rails yep. that you can add um, for storage underneath. It's easy as pointing the mouse where you want them to go and it'll light up green to show you where it can be added. Um, and it, it'll, it puts it right in there. So I'm gonna go back and put our doors on, just a normal vented door. And now there's rack rails available in both of those um, portions of the console. You can also add um, electrical um, outlets and things like that that go onto the rails. What I like to do um, and what I do for everyone is I, I can hit electrify, electrify console and see how it turns green. I electrify the console and I electrify the console just by clicking on there. So now it has all the accessories that are going to be included on the quote now um, that are needed to make that console function. Again, you can add on extras as you need as well. Yeah. Well, one thing you can never have on a console or a room like this, enough electrical outlets and mm -hmm. plugs. It, you know, everything typically uses an outlet, you know, from radios to, you know, of course, the monitors, but anything underneath. But again, everyone wants chargers now for their phones or, uh, you know, laptops. So whatever you do here, yeah, always put extra of these in. Was one of the things actually helping with installations, fans. If somebody puts a fan in there, guess what? Every fan takes an electrical outlet. So again, something just to, to put into the design and you know think about. Yeah, we always add in, especially with the sight lines, we'll always add in the rack rails and uh, and some electric additional to what's additional to electrifying it. We'll add an extra ones because, like you said, Tom, there's never you can never have enough. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Um, next, we're going to take a look at the surfaces. So this is an, another easy um, change to make. We can come over here and hit surfaces, and it's going to choose each surface that I could change. I tend to quote the comfort edge because on a, um, on a console where someone's going to be sitting day to day, we like to do the comfort edge because it's got a protective um, barrier there. And I can choose what color I want. Let's see. Hmm. I tend to go with this guy. <laughs> It's just a, it's no special reason. I just enjoy that one. I can <laughs> click on the surface and choose comfort edge and choose a different color. I can also do the end panels if I'm feeling like they want, if I'm feeling like extra creative, I can change those out. I tend to kind of let them be how they're quoted, it, how they are within, within Wells, but okay. if you're interested, you can swap yep. them out and make them look fancy. Now, nice. did the, the com comfort edge, uh, you know, definitely uh, out of all the um, work surfaces that uh, have given the comfort edge. And we always have one of these as a sample. I have a little sample because in a lot of environments where, um, you know, security people typically have their belts on, but also they have other devices on their belts that really cut into the edges. The comfort edge holds up much longer than anything else out there in the industry. But one thing you do have to remember, it is made to the order. So again, you know, uh, it will add a little bit to lead times, but for a console that you're probably going to keep anywhere from eight to 10 to 12 years, it definitely is going to help for the longevity of the console. And, and, the, and you can customize this, right? Like yep. this is, this is off the shelf. This is standard yeah. off the shelf, but if I want a Corian work surface, that can be, <laughs> Not yeah. necessarily done in wells, but that can be a special customization of your console. Correct. So at this point, consoles are designed. We've electrified the consoles. I've showed you how we can get inside underneath here and add some things in. Um, I then will go through when I can, because a lot of integrators, when they ask about this, they want this to be um, like a wow factor to show the, a customer like this is what it's going to look like in your room as much as we possibly can within the program. So part of the way we can do that is by um, changing out some of the images here on the different um, monitors just to kind of give them an, again kind of a, an example of what this might look like. A cool feature uh, is that you can also add a custom um, images so you could potentially put whatever you want in there specific to that company if you think that that would you know really wow them um, so that's just an example I'll do this quick 
It's also for internal, right? I mean, if I'm designing my own security center and I have to present this to the um, financial officer or, or, or regional director or whoever internally as an end user, th these are going to be nice benefits as well. Yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> and, and one of the other things is Katie's putting some of the uh, customs uh, design on the monitors. Once, w once this is designed and developed in a Wells uh, software, which again, I consider Wells almost like Visio. Um, it's much easier, I think, than CAD, um, but it, it is about where Visio is. So again, very user friendly, um, allows you to see exactly what you need. But if you need a true, what we call rendering, you can take this now information and with whatever your design of your room or colors of your room, you can then, we can have Winstead put together a complete rendering like it's in our catalogs. And if anyone's ever seen a Winstead catalog, it is a great resource. It shows some different designs, some layouts, um, gets your, gets your, um, uh, your, your group or your committee thinking of what they need to put in their room and their layout. So a lot of times in a meeting, I'll just start putting catalogs out, letting them page through. And next thing you know, as a group, you see them start going to one, one or two pages. And then at that point, it gives you the information you need. So someone like Katie or Rick or someone at Winstead can put together or design a little bit easier, at least point them in a direction, or I should say they point you in a direction of what they're looking for. At um, this point in the design, I'll usually take an overhead view to kind of get an idea if, if the consoles are far enough away from the wall, if the spacing in the room looks good. Because at this point, all I need to do is go in and add some chairs and some people and some accessories, and it's ready to go. Um, this looks good. I probably would move, I'm going to move this out from the wall a little bit because those are big 80, 80 inch screens, but you can see there's still a significant amount of cr space here for, um, for people to be able to get by the console. And then also when this design would be passed on to Winstead, we're able to get CAD drawings that should give you the, the true, um, measurements, you know, to, to make sure everything's compliant for space and stuff as well. Um, so that looks good. Let's add some people. So you can um, add here under chairs, you can quote, you can choose, they all, Winstead does sell chairs. So you can add them to the quote or you can just add a person sitting um, and not quote the chairs, but we always quote the chairs um, because you're gonna want a new chair with a brand new console. A lot of time, from my understanding is a lot of people will go get a chair that, you know, down from where you can get, any place that shall remain, we'll, we won't name any names, but you can go get a nice office chair, but is it made for someone to sit at 24 seven and watch video? Probably not. So this is what um, Winstead carries a great chair that will do that. It will yeah. hold up to all the people and all it, the activity. <laughs> to to so, the things I always tell people with a console, you don't want to cheapen out on chairs because again, like you said, people are sitting there 24 hours a day, seven days a week and a cheap chair will last three, six, maybe nine months, and, and it just starts deteriorating. A good chair will last much longer. Again, a 24-7 chair. And the other is the work surface. Because again, if it's not durable, and it's not going to hold up to the beating, or I hate to say it, people get, you know, second or third shift, start picking at it or something of that nature, then, you know, a comfort edge will hold up for years without, uh, you know, chipping or flaking or having any issues. Katie, I love the way you're putting in again, everything here. So again, that customer can actually see, hey, if we put a keyboard in there, if we put a variable speed joystick in there, if we put phones or radios in there, how much room will I have? You know, because again, they want their operators to be comfortable because again, they're typically in this room each eight hours a day, if not more. Okay. All right, so at this point, I would usually send this simple of a, of a version of this to a customer to kind of get some ideas if they would have any feedback on the layout or if they like the shape, if they want to switch out a, a work surface color, something like that. Um, you would send and, it meaning what? I'm not, if I'm not, if you're doing the concierge service, mm -hmm. you're not going to send me wells, right? What, what no. are you going to send me? 
what I can do is um, I can send you a JPEG file easily. Um, and what I, a trick in Wells is that your F buttons are going to be able to give you different shots of the room so you can get different views. So um, I will pick one that makes, or pick a couple of them that make sense. Um, make sure it's a useful shot. And you can come over here to File, Save As. And let's see. When you save it, you're just going to save it as a JPEG instead of as a Wells file. And that will just save like any other file. And you can, you can um, email it over to your customer. It's small enough. It's not a huge file. And just give them different, uh, different views of, of the um, console in the room as you've designed it quick and easy, and it's also able, we're able to do that. Edits are extremely easy to do, so I oftentimes will send some um, shots over to a customer and we'll, we'll kind of converse back and forth about changing this or tweaking that. And then once we've decided, I can send that off to Winsetta, we can get a real life rendering and I can get a quote for them. A handy tool from um, Wells is F9 is gonna give you a list of everything that's in, um, in the consoles at MSRP. Um, that's a great resource there because so many times people will have what you just did and Hey, that's great. That gives them at least what it's going to look like. But I hate to say everybody wants to know is, well, how much is this going to cost? You know, is it in my budget? Is it in my realm? So this gives them at least a good budgetary number of what that, you know, what you're going to see pretty much on the page here, minus the actual monitors themselves. The brackets are there, but the monitors are not. Um, and the one thing I always tell people also is make sure when you get a quote at this point, we do know the shipping zip code because we do want to make sure Winstead puts shipping in because some of these consoles, something like this could be anywhere from 800 to $1,500 in shipping. So we want to make sure everybody is covered on the shipping costs too. Yep. An important thing to point out too is this is all, this, this, um, co these consoles that I designed are, I have, what, how do we say it? We get right off the shelf. Like these are, there's no custom components to these. Um, there's lots of, we can do Corian. There's all different kinds of personalization stuff we can do. We can. Personalization we can meaning what? Um, if someone would like their um, company logo to live maybe like on the work surface or if they wanted to put it on an end panel, um, that's something that fre that frequently Winstead does. Those are things I need to reach out to Winstead to get a, get a quote on, but, and I can't, I can't show you that in Wells, but we can, sh we can show that to you in a real life rendering once we, you know, have landed on the, the important details of, um, of the console. So there's much more that we can offer beyond what's shown here in Wells, but it's a great tool to show you what it's going to look like, what it's going to look like in your room. Even as a consultant here at this point, they know now at this point, the room is big enough for at least this type of design. So again, you know, they, they need to know, well, maybe they're going to put lockers in the one wall, or maybe they're going to do something even like a collaboration desk or uh, something of that nature, which believe it or not, Winstead can also do mm -hmm. on the, uh, um, you know, some of the wells, but also in the custom division also. Yeah. So you could have like a, um, like a little four person work surface. Yep. You could have a, um, ammunition clearing area. I know I've seen those designed by Winstead before where, yep. uh, officers can clear their, their weapons. Mm -hmm. It's easy to throw a condenser in there. I just threw one in there and just show spacing. So, uh, something that I, that has, been updated in Wells recently, which is going to be a really useful tool for me, is this measure button over here. Because space is usually such an, a, a um, Where a was the measure button? Sorry, I didn't see it. Oh, it's on the right-hand side on okay. the bottom here. You can click on measure and just drag between the two spaces that you would want. Or say, say I want to do, um, let's go back to it. So this would be good for like ADA compliance or if I have known exactly. carts or things that I need to be able to move around the room easily. Right, like say we wanted to make sure that behind this credenza was ADA compliant. This that's going to show me it's not. But um, either way, it's a great tool because that is I get questions about um, spacing and um, amount available more than any other question I get. And that's a new tool that they've just rolled out with the new wells. So at this point, I would create a quote. 
I would either do MSRP or uh, if we're, I'm working with an integrator that's a Winstead dealer, I could create a quote for them based off of uh, the list that Wells provides. And we kind of go from there as far as getting a real life rendering and doing any editing that the, is needed. So, Katie, thank you so much for doing a, a Wells uh, demonstration and uh, basically showing the customers how easy it is to, to work. Um, I, again, as I tell people, it's like Visio. Um, and the nice thing is you can go to the Winstead uh, website and you can download it free of charge. Um, typically what they'll do is they'll collect your information, make sure who you are, and then I'll send you a password and a link then to the software so you can download it. And you get a full working package like Katie just showed us. So again, you can work on it if you want as an end user and integrator consultant, you can get us involved with it. You can even have Winstead, which Winstead's out of Minnesota. And there's eight people there that will help you design, develop um, consoles and, uh, you know, pretty much give you everything you need from a rendering to a wells to a bill of material to any specifications. So whatever your needs are for a console, vertical rack, uh, or even a collaboration desk or true uh, um, uh, uh, any type of room that you're looking for for furniture, you can let us know or Winstead know and we'll help you any way we possibly can.